Hello and welcome back to the third segment of my last remnant hard mode walkthrough. Uh, you can see here these are the results of uh, the Death Eater grind that I had been doing off camera. Uh, showing here that I, I went back to the southwest road got the Mystic Fiend Fangs from the Harvest Point. Uh, picked up an Elven Core by splitting the Death Eater. Uh, a couple other miscellaneous items in there as well that uh, we'll revisit to, to finish out once um, we actually approach those guild tasks. Um, but right off the bat here, I'm showing that uh, uh, Mr. Diggs here is uh, com completely maxed out, uh, so I did some harvesting in the Vale of the Gods. Uh, and I also showed that uh, Emma's Devil's Dew has reached uh, Nimble Devil's Dew 5. Uh, that was really the focus of the Death Eater grind, was to prepare her for the Namal Nerum fight here in Newer Mine. Uh, we're going to kick things off right off the bat by going uh, on with the story portion. Uh, we'll return to Illusion and uh, take on Numer Mine. We've got one little uh, pit stop to make here before we uh, return there, and that is uh, just to keep keep up on the uh, the witch's quest. So here we have uh, Illusion's Witch. Uh, again, we wanna, you want to stay on top of this so that once we reach the next one in Nagapur, uh, that we don't end up uh, cutting the quest chain short by missing it. Uh, here we'll just uh, revisit Emma, and then we will return to Numer Mine. Uh, I'll make a couple comments uh, throughout that uh, throughout that trip. Alright, just a quick pit stop here. Uh, all I'm doing is highlighting this dig point. If you have not yet uh, obtained the two pieces of shadow metal needed for the guild task, uh, here's another harvest point. Uh, you recall that we got our two pieces uh, back in the catacombs. Uh, that is a harvest point that has a slightly higher chance of obtaining it though. So uh, again, if you're behind, uh, grab them from that point. So now we're coming up to the puzzle portion of uh, Numer Mine, and it's the uh, the elevator segment. Uh, it's possible to get through this portion without uh, getting into any fights. You just have to uh, be a little bit patient. Uh, the first segment here is uh, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, all you have to do is just wait for the Dagon to proceed slowly, and then once it is more than halfway across the uh, the chasm here, uh, you can safely move past it. We'll, we'll stop at the first lift, uh, get off. There's a treasure chest there with a formation upgrade in it, and uh, then we'll make uh, a couple more. We'll make one more stop along the way uh, just to show you a, uh, a harvest point. Uh, but then you'll see from the video that it's possible to get through this without a single fight. All right, so moving on, uh, the second segment is not that complicated either. Uh, it introduces two Dagons, and uh, they both start synchronized, but if you wait uh, for them to at least move on uh, one rotation uh, through their cycle, they will uh, no longer be synchronized. And after uh, they break synchronization, uh, wait for the first one to get halfway across the platform. Uh, you can proceed down uh, and very likely will not cross paths with that second Dagon. Uh, on this uh, little... Uh, alcove here. Uh, we're going to get off and uh, I'm going to show you here this uh, digs point. Uh, I mentioned earlier when we were in Lava Fender uh, harvesting and, uh, and picking up a morsel there. Uh, we picked up one rough alp stone from a, a dig site there, uh, but they are much more common here. Uh, you do need one of them uh, for the Assassin's Dagger guild task, um, but uh, they're pretty common here, so uh, you could use this point uh, to harvest four stones and then sell all but one of them uh, for cash. Uh, this harvest point actually has the chance to restore your digs to full. And so uh, technically you could just uh, save scum this to get 100 of the stones before you move on. Uh, maybe spend half your digs, uh, save it, and then uh, just save and reload until you get the uh, digs restore. Uh, again, if you have the patience for that. Uh, but it's a, it's a good chunk of change for this part of the game. Uh, however, uh, you see that uh, at the start of the clip I showed that I had maxed Mr. Diggs by harvesting in the Vale of the Gods, and I have uh, 200,000 gold, so I don't need to abuse this, uh, this dig spot in order to get extra money. Uh. Hmm? Oh, 
right! Awesome! Hmm? Okay, moving on now to the uh, final segment of this uh, platform portion. Uh, all you have to do is wait uh, for the two uh, Dagons to be moving at a slow speed and to be uh, separated. And what I mean separated is uh, one is further along in his uh, path of travel than the other one is. Uh, once the top one has passed uh, the mid part of the platform, you can proceed uh, safely. Uh, you should reach the bottom before the second one has uh, reached the far right or far left and uh, turned around to uh, begin traveling the other way. Uh, they do change in speed, uh, and so if you see that uh, they have a boost in speed, uh, don't try to race them. Uh, just wait for them to both reset to the slow speed. Uh, here you'll see I just grabbed the Stone of Marshall, which is necessary for uh, opening the door and proceeding to the Namal Niram fight. I'm going to make a couple of uh, changes here before I go on. Uh, namely, I'm going to remove Emma from the active party, and I'm going to turn off uh, all of Rush's arts except for his uh, his healing abilities. Uh, what will happen is, uh, this is kind of common knowledge, but if you didn't know, uh, you could bench Emma, and uh, she will still join the fight on her own uh, as an individual unit uh, with uh, significantly increased stats. And so uh, we developed her in the uh, Death Eater grind uh, for this moment. Uh, her uh, Nimble Devils do 5 is going to be more than sufficient to uh, take out Namal Niram by herself, uh, and Rush will just be on pure support, uh, healing her as necessary. stronger. Right.
All right, we are back in Athlum and uh, we have the 12 unit upgrade. Uh, before we move on with the story, uh, got a couple of things to take care of. We're gonna stop by the guild, turn in a couple of tasks, and then uh, what I'd like to do is uh, redeem the 50 chain count task in particular. Uh, that makes the unit uh, Hematea available. Hematea is a generic unit, uh, one of the talented generics I've mentioned in the past. Uh, he starts with both invocations and uh, hexes. Uh, certainly a worthwhile leader to include uh, in your party. Uh, but I'm not going to use him in, uh, in standard capacity, we'll say. Uh, I'm going to deploy him, shift into Mystic Focus, and then I'm going to use his uh, default upgrade path for his weapon to complete the Ouroboros Volge guild task uh, much later in the game. And uh, so what that allows you to do uh, is uh, basically skip having to gather all of the base level components of, of every weapon to upgrade to the Ouroboros Volge. Uh, he's going to make a jump there when I purchase the uh, Nagapurin uh, in the second half of the game. It's a spear in Nagapur. Uh, after he asks for that, he will shift to Mystic Focus and his following upgrade will be the Ouroboros Volge. So I'll only really have to gather components uh, for one upgrade. Not to mention that I won't have to uh, to spend the money to do it, he'll spend his own money. So uh, when we get into that, uh, I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more. Uh, you'll see also that uh, he starts in the Marauder class and that there is a guild task for having one Marauder in your party. So as soon as you hire him, you may as well cash in that task as well. Uh, I, I mentioned that I have to shift him to Mystic Focus and I want to take a moment to explain how you do that. So uh, for, for generic units, uh, every time you upgrade their weapon, uh, it's going to look at it, the ratio of mystic uses to physical uses, and normal, regular attacks count as a physical use. Uh, provided that one of the two is greater than 60% of the grand total, uh, the unit will shift to the corresponding focus. And so in this case, uh, I'm going to use him uh, for strictly mystic arts. He's going to lead the union so that uh, the only actions he takes are mystic. And then, um, provided 10 battles have passed before he uh, asks for the Nagapurin later on. Uh, once he has it, he will shift to Mystic Focus. And then once again, uh, the Ouroboros Volge will be the next upgrade. Uh, but after I've, uh, after I've deployed him and gotten those Mystic uses in, I'm just gonna leave him on the bench until I'm uh, into the second part of the game to get that weapon. Uh, it's just, it's risky leaving him deployed. Uh, it's very easy to, uh, to not keep track of his uh, regular attacks or even combat arts. And then uh, you could unfortunately shift him to uh, combat or just leave him in balance focus and uh, then you'll be stuck because he is the only unit uh, besides a version of Jorgen that will upgrade to the Ouroboros Volge. Checking my stats, huh? I'll follow whatever orders you give me. So I'm going to make another pit stop here at the recruiter. Uh, more units have become available after completing the Doomer Mine segment, and uh, the unit in particular that I want is this one here, Minuus. Uh, I'll show you here that Minuus starts uh, with the Warrior's Tabor's Inn. Uh, a single upgrade is the Commander's Tabor's Inn, and that is needed for yeah, completion of its own guild task. Uh, so all of those components, the Steel Ore, the Oil Fly, and the Land Insect to Carapace, can be obtained through harvesting, so no fighting is necessary, you just got to gather the uh, needed amounts and then return to town and he will upgrade. Uh, the steel ore and the oil fly uh, are obtained from the harvest point that I stopped at first in uh, the catacombs. So you can get both of them from that same one uh, that I was looking for shadow metal at. Uh, and then the land insect carapaces we got in the great sand sea, or we can get in the great sand sea, uh, at the harvest point where we got passion blooms uh, on our first run through there. So uh, we'll return there, I'll, I'll speak more on it uh, at that time. Uh, for now, uh, I'm going to knock out the uh, quest Bravery and Loyalty. It's offered by Emma here in the Athlum pub. It is the first quest that is missable. Uh, so if you progress too far in the story, 
Emma leaves the party and uh, the opportunity to complete the quest uh, will pass. And so uh, before we go any further, we want to make sure we do this. This quest is available uh, basically as soon as uh, uh, the generals join the party. So uh, there's no uh, no reason uh, that we won't be able to complete this uh, without any kind of hassle now. Uh, after com completing the catacombs and uh, gone through newer mine, uh, plus having completed the Death Eater grind, uh, our units are going to be more than prepared to, uh, to handle this early game quest. Okay, later. So this boss fight is pretty straightforward. Uh, the only thing worth pointing out here is, uh, as you can see, if you've benched Emma, she will join on her own. Uh, just like in the Namal Nirum fight, uh, she'll join with uh, increased stats, and it does allow you to exceed the 12 units uh, maximum uh, at this stage of the game. Um, she is pretty well developed from the Death Eater grind, so she'll actually be able to uh, hold her own. Uh, but if anything, I would use her to distract one of the black wings. Uh, either of those black wings on turn one are going to use curse just like a lot of the spirit lord type enemies do uh, and so that can be kind of a hassle to deal with uh, if you don't have a reviver in your party at this time uh, but uh, other than that uh, the fight is pretty straightforward uh, you'll see we'll be uh, done here in no time. Don't 
let him take a step further, boys. Coming in. Excellent. So as you'll see, as we return to the world map after completing the Numer Mine segment, uh, both the Heroic Ramparts and Numer Mine become available on the world map. Uh, we're going to unlock a little bit more. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we're going to return to Illusion and speak with the bartender uh, by asking about uh, other areas. Uh, we'll unlock uh, Breca Valtel, which is the uh, gateway to Crookfen, and then on to Melfina. So for our first visit here to Brick Valtel, uh, there's a couple of things we want to take care of uh, strictly through harvesting. Uh, if you uh, are strong enough and you have not already taken out Nussnackers, uh, this is an opportunity to take down uh, six of them uh, for their own guild task, but we did that in the first path. Uh, they're significantly weaker there. Uh, here we've got uh, our first harvest point, and uh, what I'm looking to get from this is Fossilized Tree. I'm going to get a lot of Astra Alloys, but uh, Fossilized Tree is what I'm looking for, and you need five of them for that guild task. And so you'll see I'm going to spend uh, practically all of my digs uh, on this one spot. Uh, afterwards, uh, if you continue on uh, straight ahead as we're facing the harvest point, um, you'll exit out uh, of the map, and uh, this exit will unlock uh, Crookfen. Okay, um, we'll return here uh, immediately after exiting to the world map uh, in order to uh, take care of another harvest point. Uh, and uh, when we get there, I'll talk more about that. Um, but again, five fossilized trees. That's what we're looking for right now. Uh, we are going to come back here, though, and do some fighting later on. Uh, there are some uh, captures and splits that uh, are necessary for the completion of other guild tasks. So now on our return trip, uh, we're coming to this harvest point. Uh, what I'm looking to get from this is the Titicaca leaves. Uh, you need three of these uh, for the completion of the skill task. Uh, much easier to get from this, uh, this harvest point. Uh, it won't give us as much hassle as the fossilized trees did a moment ago. Uh, there's a couple other things to get uh, while we're visiting. Uh, a couple of treasure chests, uh, the map of the area for one. 
Uh, there's a formation upgrade. Uh, there's another harvest point over uh, on the uh, plateau where the two Janna are. And I'm pretty sure I stopped there to point it out. Um, if you're harvesting for stones, uh, you can harvest the uh, rough uh, Kuchelain stones uh, that sell for significantly more than the stones available at the Vale of the Gods. Uh, the, the negative uh, side of that is that uh, you have to travel a lot further in order to reach uh, the dig point. Uh, but uh, with the ability to sprint here on the, the PS4 version, uh, it's not that much further out of the way. So another place to go if you're a little tired of harvesting stones uh, from the Vale of the Gods. Uh, lastly, uh, I'm going to move on uh, to the northernmost part of the map uh, as the second exit. Uh, there's a, a Yama Traveler there that tells you that the road ahead is blocked. Uh, you can still exit through that area. And then uh, later on in the game, when you are moving on to the uh, Mount Vakal portion, uh, if you have not already passed through that exit, uh, you'll have to uh, you'll have to do so at that time in order to unlock Mount Vakal. But since we've done it at this point, uh, once that story portion uh, is reached, uh, it will open automatically on the world map. So we've got uh, just a couple things to do here on this trip to Crookfin. Uh, we've got treasure chests to collect, uh, the map, and a couple others. Uh, we're going to fight uh, gluttons, uh, which are the uh, little frog type enemies here. Uh, we're looking to take out seven of those for the guild task. Uh, typically I want to uh, postpone any uh, unnecessary fighting until after I've uh, done my grind uh, so that I don't raise my BR too early. Uh, but these are pretty easy and it is only seven of them. So uh, we'll take them out while we're here. Uh, after which we'll uh, continue uh, on through the map and uh, you'll see we'll make uh, one pit stop and another excavation point to pick up uh, a morsel for Mr. Diggs, uh, the Pouse Morsel which, uh, if you've been keeping track, should be our seventh morsel uh, in addition to the five that we began with. Uh, a couple more to uh, obtain here uh, in the first half of the game. Um, but uh, since Mr. Diggs is pretty much maxed out now, um, a couple extra morsels is not going to be a, a huge game changer for him. Sweet! At last. I suppose you can't win them all. You can't win them all.
Okay, later. Come on out! Okay, later. So as you can see, I'm returning to Numer Mine uh, to pick up a couple of things before we progress with the story. Uh, first off, there's a new segment that's opened up after the uh, story part is completed. Uh, this area has enemies that are significantly stronger than you are, so it is not recommended that you fight them uh, unless you have a party set up uh, specifically to deal with them. Uh, their BR is so much greater than, than ours at this point um, that uh, you actually get an experience bonus uh, for every action you, uh, you execute against them. Um, and we're going to come back here and, uh, and I'll do what's called the Godwood Grind. I'll demonstrate that at the end of this video. Uh, it's an enemy that has a, an AI that's easy to exploit, and so you can use the experience bonus to, uh, to really focus your characters and obtain a, a certain class or develop them as you wish. Uh, here I'm uh, pointing out this excavation point. Uh, there are two of them that appear in this segment, or this section. Uh, typically, they're not a guaranteed uh, spawn, but um, usually there's two of them here. And if uh, your Mr. Diggs is high enough uh, in development to where he can pick up gold, uh, you can get uh, randomly uh, a huge chunk of gold from those excavation points. Uh, the base level is about 5,000, and so uh, it's, it's a nice place to... Uh, to uh, gain some additional funds. Uh, you can save scum them if you want to. Uh, this harvest point here has a couple of items in it uh, worth pointing out. Uh, it has primordial alloy, uh, which I need for some weapon upgrades. Uh, I do need to hire a couple of units first in order to make good use of it. Uh, also voltaic crystals. Uh, you need four of those uh, for its own guild task uh, later on. And then uh, lastly, the rough bogart stone. Uh, which you could uh, you could mine for money. It's a rare find, uh, probably not worth the effort, uh, but they do sell for uh, over a thousand gold apiece. Hmm? So I'm going to pause uh, at a few locations here after uh, reaching the bottom of this lift to show where the excavation points can spawn. Uh, again, you can abuse these for gold uh, if you're willing to save scum these. Uh, there's the uh, treasure chest up here uh, that has a map for the area. Uh, and then at the very end, uh, there is a treasure chest that has the blood chalice. Uh, that is an accessory that uh, Rush or Crinia will uh, use. Uh, similar to the Samarian that we picked up earlier in Blacktail, uh, it is a growth boost remnant. Uh, the difference uh, for this one is that uh, this will boost the experience gain towards um, mystic skills. So whereas the Samarian will uh, develop mystic arts, okay, the individual arts like Spark, Spark 1, Spark 2, uh, that much faster. Uh, this will boost the development of the uh, skill itself. So invocations uh, will reach invocations level 2, 3, uh, and so forth that much quicker. Um, even though uh, I would mentioned that I'm not going to do a Mystic Rush, uh, it's still a very handy um, accessory to, uh, to make good use of. Uh, I'll also point out here that uh, you saw that there's the rare, the Raging Persephone. Uh, there's no reason to fight that right now. Uh, it's right. just as strong as the other enemies in this uh, location. Uh, it, it'll it overdrive too, so it's, uh, again, if, unless you're set up to deal with it, it's probably going to take you out um, pretty easily. Uh, no reason to fight it, but uh, if you uh, enter the area and you see vultures, um, pretty much guaranteed that Raging Persephone is there.
here at the heroic ramparts uh, i've got a couple of tasks to do um we're gonna actually end up going through this area twice uh, we'll exit uh, two different exits to unlock uh, two different new locations on the world map. Uh, the first time through here, uh, I'm going to come to this spot, uh, pick up the treasure chest with the map of the area. And then shortly after that, if you follow uh, the coast here or the uh, uh, riverbank, uh, you'll come up to uh, this excavation point that has the Brachion morsel. It would be uh, the eighth morsel we've picked up for Mr. Diggs. Uh, again, increasing his digs count by one, and uh, fully restoring his uh, his awesome. digs count to the maximum. So, uh, okay. worth grabbing uh, while you're passing through. Um, in this uh, little fortification area, uh, there's one more treasure chest, and then I happen to uh, to come across an excavation point that contains uh, the antique come pot. Uh, that's not something you necessarily have to seek out. You can purchase okay. them uh, in Malfina, but you do need uh, three antique pots for the um, the Ram Skull uh, later on, uh, and I kind of pause on that uh, once we get to Malfina later on. Uh, but again, I found them here, and so I'm just going to uh, place them on my uh, save list of components. Uh, and then we will uh, exit this little uh, base area and then uh, onward just through the exit of the map. Uh, we'll come back in uh, and then uh, exit out the western side. Um, this route here will unlock Nagapur, uh, the western exit will unlock Gore. So on this return trip, I'm just going to comment that uh, I'll be coming back uh, once more to take on these John Amagus uh, that you'll see that I'm skipping for the time being. Uh, I want to include two generic units in my party uh, before I start fighting them for their own guild task. You do have to take down uh, six of them for a guild task of their own, but uh, you can capture and split them, uh, plus get some other drops uh, needed for other guild tasks. And uh, with the inclusion of both okay, Megalius and Iridus, uh, two generic units, uh, I'll be able to gather components they need to upgrade their weapons. Uh, and just like uh, what I mentioned back with uh, Hematea, uh, you can use these two units to complete uh, other uh, weapon crafting uh, guild tasks. Uh, again, saves you uh, a lot of hassle having to harvest all the base components, uh, plus it doesn't cost you anything uh, to do the upgrading if you just let the unit upgrade themselves. Uh, I am stopping at this harvest point uh, for something specific to my team. Uh, it's not anything you would necessarily have to do, but uh, I need uh, beast eggs for both McGrady and for Balson to upgrade their warrior's halberds. Uh, and so, uh, unfortunately, I'm taking the time on this video to do it here uh, at this harvest point. Uh, you'll see that uh, I get a bunch of other components. Uh, Titicaca leaves if you didn't pick them up from uh, Bereka Valtel. Um, but I'm looking to get just uh, some beast eggs here, and after I've uh, spent pretty much all of my digs, uh, I do get uh, what I need, uh, then I'll be moving on. Come on out! Hmm? <sighs> okay, later! I'll follow whatever orders you give me.
So we've got a couple of tasks to complete here in Nagapur besides the story portion. Uh, here I'm just pointing out uh, the, the shops available here by the canal. Uh, they do become unavailable after the uh, story segment. Uh, but there are some components you can pick up from these uh, places to complete guild tasks. Uh, you do need three horns if you haven't uh, found them by now. Uh, you need three of them for its own guild task. Uh, at this shop, uh, I'm looking for talons. Uh, I actually need um, seven talons uh, in total for the Mermaid's Malice upgrade. Uh, I'm grabbing more because I, I have a couple of other um, other uh, crafting things I'm looking to do specific to my party. But again, the, uh, the horns and talons uh, you do need uh, and so they can be bought here if you have not harvested them. Uh, shortly after this, I'm going to move to the end of the pier and uh, we'll take care of what I've mentioned a few times uh, heading up to this point, and that is Nagapur's Witch. Uh, that is the quest that will disappear. Uh, again, just as the shops disappear, uh, she will become unreachable uh, if you've not completed this quest by this point in the story, or at least by the point in the story where uh, this area is no longer accessible. So hopefully you're up to date and uh, you can knock this one out uh, with this visit. All of the uh, future uh, witches uh, quests are not missable, so this is the only point in the chain uh, where the chain can be broken. So story-wise, all you have to do is find uh, Pegasus and Emma, uh, speak to them in their respective areas, and then return to Flesbon uh, to get a cutscene to advance the story. Uh, but uh, here we're going to make a side trip to the guild, cash in on some uh, guild tasks. Uh, and as I mentioned on the Heroic Ramparts, I'm looking to hire Megalius uh, since his uh, first weapon upgrade takes him to the Elite Scepter, uh, which is necessary to have for its own guild task. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use Megalius uh, to accomplish that. You can get the Elite Scepter by hiring uh, later available soldiers or uh, as a drop by farming uh, the Bandit in the Catacombs. Um, but uh, for me, I think this is a pretty simple early way to, uh, to obtain that. Uh, I stopped here just to uh, point out Laverne. Uh, if you turn in the three Titicaca leave uh, guild task, he becomes available. Uh, as far as generics go, he's a little unique in that he uh, dual wields axes. Uh, he's uh, a bard candidate. He starts with uh, low-level potions, so if you push his weapons uh, fairly early, uh, he may not become uh, a bard. He may uh, end up staying as a monk, if that's what you're looking for out of a character. Uh, but uh, certainly worth including. I typically include him uh, in a lot of my runs. Uh, but again, uh, Megalius, we're going to add him to the group uh, so that uh, we can obtain that elite scepter. Um, again, returning to the story, uh, you jump back to Flesbon, you'll get a cutscene. Uh, and then you have to return to uh, Sudanalm, where Pegasus was, uh, to speak with the amicable old man uh, standing by uh, the uh, locked gate in the back of the area. Uh, he's the only uh, character with a red bubble over his head. That will advance the story. Turn to Flesbon once more for another cutscene, and we are ready to return to Athlum.
So returning to Athlam after the Nagapur story segment, uh, I'm taking one moment here just to uh, do a gentle reminder about bravery and loyalty. If you have not completed it uh, before you return to the castle in Athlam, uh, it'll be too late. It'll become uh, missable at that point. And so you want to make sure that you've completed that by speaking uh, with Emma in the Athlam pub before you return to the castle for this cutscene. Uh, at this point, Emma leaves the party. Uh, the Nest of Eagles battle becomes uh, available on the world map, uh, which we're going to postpone for a little bit. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, side questing and uh, guild task completion. So we're back at the Great Sand Sea, and uh, with Minuus added to our party, I'm looking to gather the components to upgrade his Warrior's Tabers in to the Commander's Variant uh, to complete that guild task. This Harvest Point is where we uh, farmed earlier for four Passion Blooms. Uh, this time around, I'm looking for the rare component, the Land Insecta Carapace. Uh, I need four of them. And so uh, since it is a rare find, I'm going to save it and not record my attempts. Uh, when we come back, I'll have found uh, all four necessary uh, to upgrade his weapon. So we have the four land insecta care paces. Uh, the remaining components, the oil fly and the steel ore, we can get uh, from the first harvest point in uh, the catacombs. Uh, this is the spot where we uh, went looking for shadow metal uh, much earlier in the game. Uh, now that Minuus is in the party, uh, if I harvest uh, either of those components, uh, he will pick them up as well. And so I'm looking for uh, two of each of those. Uh, that'll be all he needs to upgrade to the Commander's Tabers Inn.
awesome! All right, and there you have it. We have uh, gathered all the components for that weapon upgrade. Now all we have to do is leave the area and uh, enter town. Uh, and upon doing so, he will uh, upgrade automatically. Let's do this! All right, we have returned to town, and as you can see, he upgraded to the Commander's Tabor's Inn uh, just upon entry. And so um, with that, uh, we're able to complete that guild task, and I'm actually going to do that right away uh, just so that I don't accidentally uh, upgrade uh, further and then miss having it in my inventory uh, when I go to turn the task in. Um, while we're here, uh, I'm going to do one more thing uh, before we move on, and that is uh, I'm going to return to the pub and I'm going to uh, interact with Darian. Uh, his quest is available at this point. Um, I'm not actually going to complete it quite yet. Uh, once we enter Malfina, though, uh, I'll be able to proceed with that. I just have to have uh, the conversation with him first. So I'm making a couple of side trips here to the Southwest Road, uh, hunting rares. And in particular, what I'm looking to, uh, to get is uh, the Draco's Blood Spawn. Uh, I want to capture and split that for three dragon eggs. And uh, once I have that, uh, I'll be able to complete the guild task that uh, not only unlocks explosives for Rush, uh, but also unlocks Iridus, uh, which I mentioned uh, earlier is a unit I want to uh, obtain to uh, upgrade his weapon to complete uh, guild tasks that require a specific weapon. In this case, uh, he's the, uh, the character that uh, will get you the Lance of Longinus. Uh, it's a little bit of a hassle, but again, it's a, it's a money saver uh, in the long run and certainly a time saver in harvesting components. Uh, but in order to get Draco's blood, uh, I need to take out the other rare uh, Bloody Paw. Uh, which is uh, a jhana that appears on the bridge. Uh, did not spawn this time. Uh, instead, uh, as you can see, Red Tears is here. And uh, Red Tears is its own guild task. Uh, it's not a one-time rare, it's respawnable, uh, so you don't necessarily have to do it uh, at any particular time. Uh, but since I was wandering through the area uh, in hopes of uh, Bloody Paw, uh, and I saw Red Tears was up, I figured let's, uh, let's just reform the party and uh, knock this one out. Uh, there's a chance uh, I could capture it, sell it for some money. Uh, there's no component I necessarily need from it, um, but you do need to take one of them out at some point uh, for sort of the three realms. Uh, another reason to take it out early is because uh, later in the game, uh, the Lost will spawn here and will actually uh, stand in the way. You won't be able to get to Red Tears uh, with the Lost in the way, which is certainly a, a much more challenging fight to get past than this one. So. Uh, if you're hunting uh, for the Bloody Paw and Draco's Blood and you see Red Tears, uh, you may as well knock it out. Come 
on. Let's kick some A. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Not bad. Thank you, Kai.
So really not too much to say on this trip and uh, Bloody Paw did spawn. Uh, it's up here on the bridge. Uh, it is a one-time rare, so uh, it's a uh, one and done once uh, we take him out. Uh, with him out of the way, Draco's blood will become available. Uh, and so uh, this will be a quick fight, uh, really without a whole lot of hassle. Come on, let's kick some A! Check this out! Damn it! So with this reload, uh, we did get the Draco's blood spawn. Uh, at the very start of this clip, you'll see that uh, I had to enter and exit because the mana cores had spawned. You're actually looking for the Feral Fang and uh, Anthrovore combo, uh, which we got on our second entry here. Uh, when you see that those two have spawned, um, shortly into the map, I'll look off to the right into that little alcove. Uh, if there is a third uh, spawn, a non-rare spawn, it will be present there. And that's your indication that you don't have a rare. Uh, if it's empty, you've got a rare on the map somewhere, uh, and then it's just a matter of seeing if it's the one you're looking for. Uh, in this case, uh, Draco's Blood looks just like the Feral Fangs. Uh, it's located right here at the very end of the map, um, along with uh, Feral Fangs around it, so uh, you probably want to save it uh, before you fight it to make sure that uh, you're only fighting the one. And um, as far as saving goes, uh, the uh, Draco's Blood is not a guaranteed capture, it's not 100% capture, it's uh, more like 30%. And so uh, since we're looking to capture and split it uh, for uh, the Dragon Eggs, I'm definitely going to uh, save this uh, to make sure that I don't have to go through hunting it uh, for the spawn a second time. Let's do this! Come on, let's kick some A! Check this out! Uh -huh. Check this out! 
Stand, soldier. I feel stronger than before! Alright, so we made it through this fight and we did get the capture. Uh, you see there that we're able to split it for all three of the dragon eggs. Uh, you do need three of them for the guild task, so make sure that you don't settle for anything less than that. Uh, for the sake of transparency, uh, I will share that it took two tries. Uh, the first time he uh, wiped everybody with merry-go-round, uh, so it's uh, not necessarily an easy fight. Uh, certainly one you want to uh, Again, save before you uh, you try to take on. So we're returning to Illusion in order to cash in on the uh, three dragon egg guild task. Uh, this does unlock explosives for Rush, uh, but more importantly to me, uh, it makes Iridus available, uh, which is a generic leader whom I will use to upgrade uh, through the Lance of Longinus. Uh, that is a weapon that you have to obtain for its own guild task, and uh, gathering the components and upgrading it on your own uh, is more time consuming and certainly uh, a lot more expensive. Um, using an NPC or a generic unit to do it, uh, he'll pay the cost, so all you have to do is the component gathering. And I'll walk you through that uh, as we begin to gather the components for it. Uh, there is one uh, pitfall component, if you will, uh, that if you gather it at the wrong time, uh, you'll miss an opportunity to uh, to obtain it at a low BR. Uh, instead, you'd have to wait until a significantly higher BR uh, to clone the item, at which point you may as well start from scratch and gather all the components yourself. So uh, I'll issue a warning when we get to that point. Uh, but for now, uh, we're going to return to Athlum, gather some components uh, so that I can demonstrate the Godwood grind. Uh, during that grind, I'm going to deploy Iridus, uh, at least for one fight. Uh, I mentioned that we have to shift him to physical focus, and uh, just like with Hematea, uh, the uh, the plan to do so is, is very similar. He has to do uh, at least one physical action, and 10 battles need to pass uh, at minimum before he upgrades his weapon. Once he upgrades his weapon, uh, it will uh, the game will look and see uh, what the ratio of physical to mystic actions are, and provided the uh, physical is 60% or greater of the total, he'll shift to physical. Uh, he doesn't have any mystic opportunities, and so it's uh, pretty much guaranteed he's going to go physical. So here outside of Numer Mine, I'm going to disband my current union setup and I'm going to uh, reassemble my team for the Godwood grind. Uh, the setup is very similar to what we used for the Death Eater mini grind. Uh, I need a slower union led by a character that is in a medic class, a class that has the medic skill or trait. Uh, in this case it is uh, Megellius and Vega, who are both uh, in the healer class. Uh, their second units in that union uh, have Vivification Herb. In that case it's going to be David and uh, Nilus. And uh, if you find that this is not a grind that you want to use for an extended period of time, uh, it's still worthwhile to use it to develop your base level uh, vivification herb, or, or even tincture if you press it that far. Uh, because the AI is so easy to manipulate, uh, you'll get plenty of opportunities to, uh, to use that skill. And then uh, later on in the game, it'll be that much more effective uh, when reviving. Um, it's also uh, worth using to develop, uh, develop remedies. And so you'll see uh, with uh, Vega and uh, Megellius, uh, they'll very quickly reach uh, higher levels of restore and, uh, and even revitalize. Um, again, at this BR, we're at BR5. Uh, I'm probably going to go at this for two or three uh, more BR, and then I'll be satisfied with my team's development. Uh, the unions that you're looking to actually develop, you want them in a fast formation so that they take action uh, before your healing union tries to um, heal them. You actually want the healing union to revive them uh, and then top off their HP when they're revived. Uh, you don't want to waste the healing opportunity before they take action because uh, the whole idea is that the enemy is going to wipe them out uh, 
most certainly with natural gas. Um, the faster formation, in this case the belt formation, which we picked up from taking down six nut snackers, is uh, your best formation for boosting speed. And it's going to give you the greatest opportunity to uh, get your, your actions in uh, before the enemy wipes you. Uh, and then uh, here in Numer Mine, uh, I'll show you uh, exactly how to extend the fight and uh, some more of the details of that once we get inside. So you'll see when we get to the next area that the Godwoods have spawned. Uh, and there's two of them on the map. Uh, the one directly in front of Rush contains a single enemy union. Uh, the one around the corner to the left contains two enemy unions. And that's the one that I'm going to focus on. Um, having uh, two targets uh, makes it a little easier to stand by when necessary so that I can extend the fight. And uh, you'll see that here uh, as we get going. Uh, I also included a couple of hex units in my reviving squads so that uh, when the time comes to end the fight, uh, I'll be able to do so before I run short of reviving components. You see there that Vivification Herb 1 uh, takes three relaxing herbs, and since the most you can carry is 100, uh, that means uh, basically 33 uses from a single uh, single unit before you run dry. We're going to have two revivers going on uh, at one time, and so you'll be lucky if you make it to uh, 16, 17, somewhere in that range uh, as far as turns go. And we certainly don't want to reach that point uh, without being able to end the fight on our own terms. So ideally you want to stand by on turn one. Uh, what this will allow the enemy to do is to also stand by and use mana well. Uh, after they've used mana well, uh, they will use natural gas in every turn thereafter, uh, provided they do not start the turn already uh, engaged in deadlock with one of your unions. And uh, if they are, uh, they will usually not use natural gas, instead they'll use uh, some higher level evocation skills uh, or even regular attacks. And uh, you want to avoid that because uh, one of their options is snare shot. And uh, there is a chance that since snare shot hits an area, that it could wipe out your reviving unions. Uh, that's another reason why I use two. Uh, just in case of the uh, off chance snare shot uh, goes off, uh, at least there's a chance it won't hit both of my revivers. Uh, but they will leave you alone if you leave them alone. Uh, you see there that uh, when left alone, they will use Life Spring to uh, fully revive. And uh, that basically is the trick here, is that you can use that to uh, postpone uh, the fight uh, almost indefinitely, uh, assuming you have enough components for it. Uh, later in the game, uh, if you have units with uh, the Remedy Art Kiss of Life, uh, you really could extend this uh, indefinitely. Uh, but the, the turn limit is uh, turn 30 for experience. Uh, any actions taken after that uh, don't gain you any experience, and so uh, that really is your window for, uh, for growth here. Uh, we are limited early on again by the amount of revived components we have, and so we're going to try to wrap this up uh, right around turn 15, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, but up until that point, we'll get plenty of, uh, plenty of actions in, uh, which results in plenty of experience. Uh, this enemy, being uh, significantly higher in BR than us, actually grants a plus 50% experience to all of our uh, actions taken, uh, provided that uh, we're, we're fighting them at right around BR uh, 15 or 16. Uh, anything greater than that, they become uh, more of a normal enemy. Uh, no bonuses. Still useful to manipulate the AI. Uh, still uh, useful to keep your BR low. Uh, again, BR experience is driven by ally deaths. Uh, with the uh, maximum reduction uh, at uh, 25 ally deaths or greater. Uh, and so uh, we're going to definitely get 25 ally deaths, which means a very, very uh, minimal uh, BR gain here. And you'll see at the end uh, that the results are uh, certainly worth it. Uh, you can use this to hit some, uh, some high-end classes or higher-ranked classes uh, very early in the game. 
Uh, again, with uh, very minimal BR growth. Right, we made it uh, 16 turns, which is uh, not too bad. Uh, basically, before we ran out of components, and you'll see there that we got uh, plenty of stat ups. Uh, captured Godwoods and Spiritwoods, uh, they sell for about uh, 5,000 gold apiece, which is useful uh, if you are uh, 
looking to recoup the cost of all of your revive components. Uh, you'll see that I split the godwood. Uh, there's two other guild tasks tied to this grind. Uh, the first is you need uh, one piece of godwood timber for its own guild task, and you also need to take out 12 spirit woods for a separate guild task. And so uh, if anything, uh, I would uh, take advantage of this uh, fight or this uh, setup in order to uh, complete those guild tasks. Um, as far as the spirit woods uh, go, uh, you do need to take down 12 of them, but um, they are mixed in with godwoods, and so your chain count uh, is not necessarily a reflection of how many spirit woods you've defeated, uh, which just like with the spiders or with, uh, with crabs, uh, just because it says you've defeated 12 enemies, uh, you may have to take down a lot more than that in order to, uh, to fulfill that requirement. So just a couple final thoughts as we return to Athlon to restock. Um, I'm going to stop by the recruiter and I'm going to pick up a couple more herb soldiers that start with Vivification Herb, uh, specifically Deacon and Sotherby. Uh, eventually, if you're using this grind for an extended period of time, uh, your Vivification Herb will become so developed that uh, if you're looking to use it to develop a healer as well, uh, you'll revive at full health and then you'll never get the opportunity to heal. And so you'll want either a weaker reviver or you want to run with smaller units deployed so that when you revive, they're not revived at full health. Uh, I also take a moment to highlight both uh, Ajipur and uh, Texthan, which are uh, uh, hex soldiers, uh, very useful to include. Uh, in the early game uh, since they do start with very very well developed hexes um, if you're playing the morale game which you certainly should uh, I would uh, grab them early so that you can get them to dispirit and, uh, and eventually bewitch uh, lastly I want to make a quick comment about uh, passive growth uh, the units that are on the bench will grow passively um, and they will actually grow in a way that uh, you're using rush uh, deployed in the fight and so very quickly what that means is that if you use rush in a combat's way um, your units on the bench will have greater strength growth passively uh, likewise if you develop him uh, if you use him mystically um, the units on the bench will have higher intelligence growth you can use that uh, to your advantage to get some uh, units to develop into classes that are outside of where they naturally fall uh, when we come back uh, for the next clip, I'll take a break uh, midway through my grind. We'll knock out a couple of quests, uh, some guild tasks, hire some more units, and uh, then I'll return uh, and wrap up the grind in, a, in another segment. <laughs> 